Step one, you say we need to talk He walks, you say sit down, it's just a talk He smiles politely back at you You stare politely right on through Some sort of window to your right As he goes left and you stay right In 1972, I, are you filming me right now? If that's all right with yeah, you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, uh, I tell this story every year to my students, the beginning of the semester, and uh, I share this with them, and it's a true story. Um, it's about a student, when I went to high school, that I bullied all the time. I made his life a living hell. I, uh, I would spit on him, call him names. I locked him in a locker. 
for hours at a time. Uh, I was on the same bus with him. I would, I would uh, pull his hair. I would call him names. And this went on for a long, long time. And uh, I never had an adult come and tell me not to do these kind of things. I just kept doing it to him. And uh, finally, I left high school at a very young age. And I, I left and moved to Toronto. And years later, I went back to the, my hometown and I was talking to some of my friends that I went to high school with and I asked where George was and they said he had been killed on a bicycle. And from that moment forward, I thought if I could help young people to realize how important it is not to, to bully other kids because now I can never go back and tell that kid how sorry I am. And every time we're down near that town, my wife and I will go to the cemetery and I'll go to his gravesite and I beg him to forgive me on, because of his short life on this planet. I made his life a living hell and I regret that and I'll regret that to the day I die. And I just hope he can forgive me. And, uh, and I think by passing the story on to other kids that they maybe realize how important it is not to hurt other people's feelings. And uh, I can't imagine what he went through every night when he went home from school and he had to and he had to face me the next day so i'm going to keep telling that story and if it has any impact on anybody then george hasn't really died in vain and that's my story okay thanks that that's all we can are you okay yeah i'm okay Suspended. Like a week after that, my best friend told me that Michelle, the girl that wanted to kill me, was going to take me off school grounds, beat the living shit out of me. It really got me freaked out. I'm suicidal and depressed. I can't eat anything. And I never seem to get any sleep. I press charges against her, but I don't think it'll help. I live in constant terror of what might happen. Why did she start this whole thing? I never did anything to her. I just want this mess to go away. I've been bullied since I was a little girl, from grade two to grade eight. I've always had people throwing stuff at me, saying I was a freak. It was ridiculous. I never wanted it to happen, but then my mom always told me when I grew up that it would be better in high school. She lied. It wasn't better. If I ever bullied anyone, uh, I think we all have bullied someone to at these, one point. To um, have I consciously done it? Um, not that I can remember. Uh, the problem is, I was a, I was bullied when I was a kid in public school, um, so I'm usually aware if I, if I was doing something conscious like that, where I went out and said I'm going to get that person. Like I just don't think that's within me because I think once you're bullied like that, you have a tendency to be more aware of when you're doing it. Subconsciously, yeah. When you uh, someone has you're having a bad day and uh, you know. You're in a situation where you get upset, or you get angry, or you get frustrated with someone. Sometimes it can come back, and you end up getting frustrated with someone else and treating them unfairly, which I qualify as bullying. If you get angry at someone that doesn't deserve it, or angry for the wrong reasons, and come down on them, to me that that borders on bullying, and you really have to watch yourself. So, and I think sometimes that's where people tend to get um, after they've been bullied their frustration level comes to the surface a lot quicker, I think, than when they haven't. So that's one of the byproducts of bullying, in my mind. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10's the worst. How bad do you believe our school's bullying issues are? That's a question that, that is a little difficult to answer. I'm gonna, I want to put it in the perspective as far as comparing it to what I believe the situation would be in, in other schools. Um, I don't believe the bullying situation at Georgian Bay Secondary School is any worse or any better than uh, in any of the other high schools. Uh, definitely we have bullying going on, so if I had to pick a number there, I'd probably pick a, a, the number three. Sort of, it's not really bad, but it's not really great either. What are your thoughts about the bullying in schools when your teachers and principals aren't doing anything about it? If that's your opinion, if the principals if and teachers Well, I mean, and again, unfortunately, it's very a very difficult thing uh, to deal with. I'm going to take the side of principals and vice principals, first of all, and say they've got a lot of other things to do. Running a school is not easy. 
People think it's a really easy job. It's not. Our principal or our vice principal here is run off his feet. There should be two vice principals. There's only one. So how can he deal with all the problems? He has to pick which ones are more crucial, which ones aren't. He's got paperwork to do. He's got meetings to attend. He's got all this stuff to do constantly. On top of that, he has to deal with discipline. So he's got a difficult job. The principal has a difficult job and things they have to deal with. So it's tough for them to actually deal with the problem uh, without support. Where does the support come from? Well, teachers. Teachers need to be the eyes out there and need to report stuff, but then they've got other things they're doing. Other students, well, the problem is, do other students feel like they can come forward and tell stuff or not? I think we live in an environment in our high schools where it's more like a prison. I think the mentality is don't rat. Don't rat on anybody. When you follow that philosophy of you don't want to be a rat, you're letting the big rats, the real rats, the real problems run your school. Who are they to say you're a rat? They're the scumbag rats that are polluting the school and doing the bad stuff and you're the one that's allowing it to happen by not dealing with it. So you're creating the own, your own problem. You're not solving it in any way. I believe that um, everyone needs to come together and say this is not acceptable in our school. We won't allow bullying and everyone from the principal to the vice principal, the teachers to the students are all responsible. If you say this is going to be a good school and there won't be any bullying, then everyone's accountable for stepping up and taking care of it. Then you won't have a problem and suddenly the real rats, the bullies, have no place to run, nothing to do and you can deal with them. But it takes everybody buying in. Unfortunately, with the drug environment that we have, the prison mentality that we that exists, it's really tough to get people to step forward. And it's been proven that one person standing up to a bully usually makes the bullying stop. How many times have you guys seen fights where everyone just stands around and no one steps in? They're all trying to get their cameras in there and trying to get um, themselves on YouTube and try to see the fight, nobody wants to stop it. Nobody wants to do anything about it. Nobody's doing anything about it, then it just gets worse. And bullies feel like they have more power. A bunch of guys in my class are constantly harassing me. I went to the principal and the counselor both, and I said that they would take care of it. But all they did was give the kids a little slap on the wrist. So, of course, things just got worse. I went through a lot through school, and I just had to deal with it on my own. No matter how many times I asked for help, nothing was ever done. There were times when I wanted to kill myself. Schools are supposed to protect their kids and make us feel safe, but I feel like my school didn't either. Nothing was ever done. They just looked the other way and let this continue. I knew this one kid, Jason, he had it even worse than me. No one ever gave him any help. After high school, everything just continued. We all thought that if we got out of high school, we would be free, we'd be safe. But I guess we were all wrong, because Jason killed himself yesterday. Frequently, we get, uh, we, I shouldn't say frequently, we, we do get complaints from, from students and, and parents about bullying. Um, we try and address those issues as, as soon as they, they arise for things. Um, quite often students are, are reluctant to provide that information to us because they're of course afraid that what's going to happen is there will be uh, some kind of retribution that, that occurs be, uh, about that. We, we keep any kind of investigation we do about uh, any complaints like that as quiet as we can to try and avoid those situations. Quite often students are, are maybe a little bit more comfortable talking to their parents at home and then the parents do, do phone us to provide us with that information and then we pursue it as best we can.
Did you find bullying occurred more in primary school or high school for you? Hmm. Uh, well, uh, I would say in elementary school more, um, only because for me, my dad was my vice principal. So I did get, uh, and, and with that being said, so because he's in the school and because he's there, I couldn't get in trouble. <laughs> but also, it, was more, it would have been more difficult for me to be in situations where I could have been bullied. I still had one guy that picked on me all the time the first couple of years I was there. And he'd hassle me something off. Like every time I came by, he'd be bad me. He'd be, you know, you want to go? Don't look at me that way. And it's like, I didn't even know what I ever did to the guy. Years later, as an adult, I walk into a bar one night with my friends, and there's this guy standing there. He comes walking up behind me. I'm like, oh, there he is. Oh, my God. I thought he was going to hit me. I'm like, I started doing this. Hey, how's it going? And he reaches his hand out. Haven't seen you for a while. Starts talking to me. I'm thinking, what's up? He's going to hit me. And finally, I said, like, what are you doing? Like, you always hated me. He goes, what? No, no, no way. And I said, yeah, you used to always pick on me and try to start a fight. He goes, well, really? I don't even remember that, but he said, I know I was an absolute jerk in high school. I had all sorts of problems. I was nasty to everybody. I'm really sorry. He said, actually, I have memories of you being this guy that was involved in school and, and was an okay guy. So he said, if I was doing that, I really didn't mean to, and I obviously was jealous. But he said, I got a family now. I was in the military for a while. I said, I'm a totally changed person. I'm really sorry. Can I buy you a beer? So, I mean, the reality is people sometimes don't realize what they're doing. They're, again, it's like what I said earlier on. They're taking their anger out on other people because they're probably being bullied themselves somewhere or have been bullied. And that's kind of the cycle of bullying is if it allows to keep happening, then people keep doing it to one another and it gets worse. So uh, I still did, I didn't answer your question. Now, I think in elementary school it was more difficult because there's more kids running around um, out in the playground. You had um, recess and things like that, and all sorts of stuff happened. Kids are sometimes mean to one another. Oh, no, you didn't. Queer? Ha! Ha! Well, I think probably the, the things that I'd like to add to the, the basic questions that were asked is, of course, one of the, the most rapidly advancing form of bullying is the, is the cyberbullying that, that goes on, uh, the text messaging, the stuff that goes on on Facebook, on, uh, on Instant Messenger, and that sort of thing. Um, and unfortunately, one of the biggest problems that, that we deal with quite often is is the rumor mill that, that happens around and, and so much of the, the situations that develop around the school um, could be uh, much more minor if, if it wasn't a situation where it was, you know, she said that he said that I said that you said sort of situation. And so it, it's like the old telephone game that you might have played when you were a little kid where you all sit in the line and you start the message at one end of the line and the, the message you get at the other end of the line is very different than the original message. And so uh, Constable Sewell and I spent a lot of time actually sort of uh, trying to mediate these sort of situations and that's quite often what happens. Nothing's been directly said to the individual that that is uh, being the bully or being bullied out of it. It's uh, They've heard it through friends and, and read it online and that sort of thing. And if we could deal much more directly with the individuals involved, that would help a whole lot.
Hello. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. 